Okay, hello and welcome to Lyric Hi-Fi. In winter, I've got a jumper on. It's the end of September. And new products that I talked to you about previously have actually arrived. And we have a family. A family of KEF LS series speakers. Now this goes back to mm, over a year ago when I talked to you about LS50 Meta and LS50 Meta Wireless 2, which are these things, the black ones. And uh, over the past year, they've been phenomenally successful worldwide. Everyone has loved them and uh, they've done very well. And then, just less than a year ago, we did a video about a little white thing down here called a KC62, which if it's out of shot, Brenton will sort out for you, and uh, with some close-ups. And it was an incredible subwoofer because of what it does. It's tiny, and you think, well, that can't have any bass. Aha, but those clever people at CAF had two different size voice coils, so a big coil and a small one inside each other. So you could have big amplifiers pushing these two bass units, but on that one chassis. But that's not enough, they had to go further than that. So they actually developed a roll surround that moved twice as far as other ones. So you've got a smaller bass unit, but to move air, it moves further than big bass units. So lots of really clever stuff. And then also miniaturization of the famous KEF uh, Uni-Q unit in these little boys, the LSX2. And so they've got amplifiers built in, they, they're just a complete system, really clever stuff. And so the family is now complete. Well, maybe there might be more to come, I don't know. But the ones at the outside are the LS60s. And the LS50 came about to, as a celebration that KEF was 50 years in business. LS60s, yes, you've guessed it. They're 60 years in business. They've worked on all this stuff and put these together. And it is, it's months since I talked to you about this and since we saw those, and they've only just appeared. Worldwide demand has been incredible. And so they've obviously been kinder to people in New York than in Belfast. But we've had them now for about uh, a month or so. We've shown them to different people, we've played them to different people, and the results are astounding. So before I go on and tell you more about them, you've got to like and subscribe and press all those buttons. And uh, then we'll get lots and lots of money and retire to the Bahamas. So whenever you see one of these videos coming from the Bahamas, you paid for it, thank you. We'll all go there. Pina Colada's all around. The uh, LS60s on the outside uh, technically are an amazing piece of work. So they've got the Uni-Q drive unit, treble unit inside the mid-range unit. And that's what they've all done. So you get a very broad spread of sound in every axis. Most loudspeakers with a separate treble unit and bass unit and mid-range unit, whenever they go off axis, the, re the, the response is much, much worse. And it's all peaky and there are frequencies that don't work well off axis. And you think, oh, well, if I point them at myself, that doesn't matter. That could be true, except that about two thirds of what you hear comes directly at you and the rest reflects off the floor, off the walls, off the ceiling. And that reflected frequency response is all over the place. And so sometimes I look at loudspeakers before I even hear them. I'm very biased and I think technically that's really a stupid idea. This is very clever. It's very clever. Off axis, completely perfect response. So. That isn't quite enough, they had to push further. They had to go with meta technology. So what's this MAT? It's a, an absorption material that goes on the back of the mid-range unit and treble unit, that's like a disc, it's about this size. And it has something ridiculous, nine kilometers of tubes of different diameters. And that takes the back pressure from drive units away. Other manufacturers tried to do this and have done it with other different tubes behind things, but tubes that go on for, for you know, out the, back of, out the back of the speaker for meters. This does all of that in a little, clever little material. But that's not enough because they needed to do more. So they've got a base unit on each side. Oh, but that's not enough. You have to have two base units on each side because they're small. But small base units, hey, remember something about small base units? Kef worked out how you could have a longer 
uh, uh, throw with the different rolls around, hey, all that stuff we learnt in the KC-62, go and check out the video, comes back again in the LS-60. Two base units on each side, hmm, where have I seen that before? Oh, remember the video we did about the blades, the blades and blades 2, the ultimate speaker that Kef make, along with all this uh, uh, opposing base units, tied together with rods so that it's all unbelievably rigid and strong, so the only thing that moves is the base units. Hmm, they've done that before as well. That's all really clever. So. You've got everything in this. No wait, there's even more. If you remember, whenever we talked about the LS50 Wireless 2, one of the clever things about these, amplifiers built in, but whenever you've got a digital signal coming in, it does the crossover split between bass and treble in the digital domain. So you've got a very exact split, maybe even a bit of correction for tidying up the performance of the drive units at the edge of the outside envelope of their frequency range. You do all that in the digital domain, which is a great idea, but the problem then is you've got four channels of digital to convert back into analog, so you need four digital to analog converters. And that's only in the LS50. Remember in LS60 we've got these base units as well, so now you've got six channels, so you need six digital to analog converters, and then you need six power amplifiers, developing, you know, I hate this watts per channel game. They say 1400 watts. Why don't we just say it's a big number and they go loud and don't distort. So they've got all of that built into these and you're like, well, that's fantastic. And what do I plug into them? But no, wait, there's more. They have a streaming system built into the speaker. So there's a master and there's a slave and they have their own app and that app, allow, that app allows you to play music from your hard drive, music curated on that, play music from whatever source you want in terms of a streaming source, so Tidal, uh, Spotify, Deezer, Quobuz, uh, all of these. And you've also got the ability to play you know, the Connect versions of these, so the uh, Spotify Connect, all these different things. You can also then plug things into them. Remember the good old days when you plugged things into an amplifier? Oh well, you can still plug a turntable into one of these, you can plug a TV in, you can plug a CD player in. Oh, you've got three inputs, analog, digital and HDMI. The HDMI, oh wait, this goes further. It's got a thing called HDMI eARC and that means if you pick up your TV remote and go I want to watch TV, that will automatically control the output of these speakers from your TV remote. So one remote makes it so easy to use. So how could these just do any more? It just seems outrageous, they do everything. Well yes, but there is actually even more, because if these slim bass units aren't enough in a large room and you really want to listen to some mm, like heavy bass stuff, I mean something real heavy metal, then you can actually add on any of the KEF subwoofers like this one. And you can do it wirelessly and you can do it and tailor the sound of that subwoofer to the frequency of the rest of the speaker and into the room. And it's all done on the app. Size of room, what you're connecting to, subwoofers, all these things. And you know what? It's all easy to do. So is there any downside to this? Well, the problem is they're too cheap. They're just too cheap. Frankly, £6,000 isn't enough, is it? It's quite a big number, £6,000. Not everybody can afford £6,000. But if you don't want to have all the boxes of a hi-fi system, and you want something you plunk down and everybody loves and it just does everything, it's a really, really fantastic system. Now, I would love to play this for you, but whenever we play music, um, uh, people come along and say, oh, that music's copyrighted, so you're not allowed to have uh, advertise, adverts in this, you're not allowed to do this. So then we end up not uh, having adverts on it. And that, so we think we should have that, so we're not gonna play music. But can I tell you, whenever I put these on, I wanted to run them in and give them a blast and wanted to see what they did, what I played. Because maybe you can go away and play the same music and go, hmm, maybe I should go to Michael's shop and listen to a pair of LS60s or another Kef dealer anywhere in the world. Not another one in Belfast, obviously. 
Um, so what I did was I put on a track called Autumn from Paolo Nettini, that well-known Italian Scots person. And now why did I put that on? And that's because it's very sparse. There's just this echoey vocal. And on these speakers, though they're tiny, you've got a big, big expanse of sound. The sound is huge off them and it just fills the room. And there's an echo uh, on that voice, which is just beautiful. And these speakers do it fantastically well. And then I put on something, I thought, I need a bit of rhythm here. So I went and put on the strokes and the adults are talking with really excellent bass line, real driving bass line. And it's just, these are just, Amazing. They just, they can do that. I thought, can they really do bass? Can they really do bass? Bach, Toccata and Fugue, Wayne Marshall, full organ symphony. Do you know what? For a small speaker, they're really good at that. Now, that kind of thing, if you really want to recreate that, yeah, Michael, you need a subwoofer. That's just the way it is. But these are designed to work with that if you need that. So, What's the drawback, apart from that cheap price? If you say to me, well, how would you make it any better than that? These do a lot of stuff for the price. But if you had a separate system and say, maybe you'd a, 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 you know, I like a Lin gear, like a, a Lin streamer that's four, five, six, seven thousand, and maybe you got a power amp, a fire amp, a couple of thousand, and a really nice pair of speakers, whether they're Kefs or, or something else, you can go above this again. And we have lots of systems that go above this again. But for what you actually get in this package, in this small, neat package, it's actually pretty incredible. And we've had people already who've had really big hi-fi systems and obviously lots of money who've said, oh, well, I'll put a pair of these in another room with a TV. And we've also had people that came in and wanted to spend three or four grand on a system who went, these are just so good, they're just so pretty, they're just so amazing that I've got to stretch and, I don't know, do interest-free credit or whatever and get these because they're a startling product. In a way, they're less hi-fi than other things because you don't, you just buy them and off you go. But isn't that beautiful that the access to something that sounds this good, anyone can have. So just to run through the range, little LSX, 1,200 pounds, excellent, tiny, work really well. Uh, LS50 Wireless Meta 2, uh, about two and a half grand. Unbelievable, fantastic speaker. Stands are 400 quid, but hey ho. And then at the end, the LS60s, 6,000 pounds. It's a lot of money, but it makes you smile. Interested in them? Come in, have a listen. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video with the same jumper. Talk to you soon. Bye.